It's with great sorrow that we are soon to bid farewell to the top-selling Aussie-built Commodore. What could possibly take its place in the hearts of the rear-wheel drive, big sedan-loving fraternity of Australia has been a topic of debate for quite some time. Well, that is until now. That car breaks our website every single time we mention it, and the comments section descends into a war zone. People either love it or loathe it. Of course, by the time you watch this, Holden will have pretty much shut the front door at Elizabeth. But the question on everyone's lips is, how does the Stinger compare to one of Australia's best ever locally produced sports cars? Today we're going to find out, but we're going to do things a little bit differently. I know you're all here for performance figures, so we're going to get through those first before we see whether the Stinger has what it takes to take on the Commodore. First up, the quarter mile sprint. In that, we'll get the 0 to 100 km an hour time, and that'll be followed by an emergency stop from a little over 100 km an hour. It should be interesting because both come with Brembo brakes. Finally, it's our slalom torture test. Small cars love this little setup, but big cars will hate it. So let's get into it. So the quarter mile, first up is the Stinger. That was a quite staggering 12.79 seconds to the quarter mile and a blistering 4.8 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour. That beats even the claim time from Kia. Given the Commodore doesn't have launch control, it takes a little bit more effort to get it cleanly off the line. But after three shots, we finally managed to get there. It is 5.3 seconds to 100 and 13.32 seconds over the quarter mile. That's a full half second or so slower on both sets for the Aussie Icon. Let's see how it fares in the braking test. They can both get up to speed, but how well do they stop? Only one way to find out. First up, the pretender to the Commodore's throne. That's an impressive 2.7 seconds from 100 k's an hour down to naught. And the Stinger's covered 36.7 metres in doing it. So what about the red line? At 2.8 seconds, that's a hundredth of a second slower than the Stinger from 100 k's an hour to zero. And distance travelled a full 100 centimetres more at 37.7 metres. This next test will really determine whether the Stinger has the depth of performance wedged into the much-loved Commodore. Each car had three attempts to set its best time, so let's see how they went. Twenty one point nine nine seconds. That's pretty impressive stuff from a big sedan. Now for the red line. I have a feeling this is going to be a bit more of a handful through the slalom. Well, that's pretty much neck and neck on the slalom, barely two hundredths of a second in it. It really is hard to call the difference between these two. Right, so we've figured out the Stinger is the performance king, but how do they stack up side by side? 
So 55,990 bucks, that's where this mid-spec SI sits right there, neck and neck with the SSV Redline. So for that kind of cash, you get your big rear tires, 255 millimeter wide, you get Brembo brakes on all four corners, plus that cracking 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6. 272 kilowatts of power, 510 newton meters of torque, and all of that translates to this. When you nail it, pins you back in the seat and it absolutely boogies. But the one thing that it doesn't do is sound good. And you can't even hear the thing in here and it doesn't sound any better on the outside either. You're going to genuinely love this interior. It is really nicely assembled. These air vents feel nice to move around and everything feels quite premium. In fact, it's topped off by this fantastic touchscreen infotainment system. So that comes with things like digital radio, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Plus around the cabin you have 12 volt power outlets, fast charging for USB, USB for music, auxiliary inputs. It really is jam packed with gear. If you're in the market for a Stinger, you're gonna want a car that is big, and a car that's gonna fit some burly adults. Now this thing does everything up the front here. I've got plenty of leg and headroom and visibility is excellent out of the front sides and back, but where it falls short is in that second row. It's got plenty of leg room, but it's down on tow room and headroom. So that sweeping roof line really cuts in, whereas the Commodore has the extra accommodation because of its sedan shape. As we're filming this, Holden has announced a seven year warranty for all new cars purchased in 2017, but it's only a short lived game because Kia has offered seven year warranties for some time now, and this thing falls under that category. Can you imagine a V6 performance car with a seven year warranty that you can transfer to other people? It almost feels like a steal. Now one of the downsides to the Stinger is that when you have stability control switched off like we do now, you find yourself an open piece of pavement like this, dip it in, Bury the throttle. There's plenty of tire smoke, but the stability control is still well and truly switched on. When we're starting to get quite sideways and we put in a bit of lock, I can feel it biting there and I can keep sort of adding power and it looks impressive from the outside, but it's not actually switched off. Whereas in the Commodore, off is completely off. One of the awesome features here at the Australian Automotive Research Centre that we extensively use for these comparisons is the B-Class roads. These roads are the typical country roads that would unsettle a lot of cars that have never seen the light of day in Australia. We keep harping on about this, but cars that have had engineering input in Australia work flawlessly on these roads and this thing is seriously, seriously impressive. We normally use the Commodore as a benchmark for roads like this. Kia has nailed that balance between comfort and sportiness. As the pace increases, the Stinger really comes alive. The feel through the steering is fantastic, especially in the sport mode, which adds a bit of weight. And the brakes are absolutely exceptional. Like, I mean, even after a bit of a torture test with our 100 to zero runs, it really wasn't an issue at all. So the Kia Stinger, does it stack up to Australia's favorite, the SS Commodore? Tell you what, it is damn close. While it doesn't have the noise, this thing has taken it to the next level.